Hello, folks. Brian Manzella from the studio in the sky. Got Michael Jacobs with me. Need to unmute, Mike. And you're in business. Can you hear me okay? Hear you great. And uh, we, uh, we're on uh, both my uh, YouTube page, Twitter page, and then me and Mike's uh, home on the internet, Postmodern Golf on Facebook uh, for a night with Brian Manzella and Michael Jacobs, or Michael Jacobs and Brian Manzella, depends on which way you read it. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, it's been a, uh, it's been like an 11 year deal, uh, to get to this point. And, uh, we have, uh, the best in the business with us tonight, Michael Jacobs. And, uh, as a director of instruction for Jacobs 3D, I can tell you, I never had a better job. <laughs> we're, we, we got everything before everybody else has got, and it's really, uh, exciting, uh, every day when, uh, you never know what, what might be the next thing that, uh, uncovers in uh in either the club kinetics or in the body kinetics so uh i'm gonna spotlight just michael's video and off we go here i'm gonna remove my spotlight and there you are michael you've uh got the stage babes yeah well hope everybody's doing well out there it was quite the long last month here in new york and um looking forward to a good golf season had over 150 golfers come out today on the first day Third hole was closed due to snow, but they didn't mind. So uh, it was, um, it's been a long month. It's been a long winter. I've never spent so much time at home with my little dog. And uh, as you can tell, it's time to get back outside and get back into action. Uh, just a couple of quick updates before we get into this. I have a lot of things on my screen, so I'll be sharing and uh, show you some nice, interesting stuff. Uh, if there's one thing that took place this winter, it was a lot of time spent with Dr. Steve uh, mastering our, our club program and uh, all the goodies that go along with it. And one thing I want to talk about tonight a little bit is we'll look at some of the forces. I'm going to have Brian just give you a quick rundown of the forces real quick. And then um, we'll look at all different parts of the swing. Uh, elements of the swing, second edition is just about complete. And it's different because I, I, you know, I wanted it to serve as the prequel to um, science of the golf swing. So it's um, different size book, some more pictures, some different explanations. So hopefully that'll help. So that'll be out in a, in a couple of days. So uh, one of the things that has gone on in golf and uh in golf instruction behind the scenes in public is this this discussion on of you know how a golfer actually moves the club and moves themselves uh the golf industry has, is you know made big um i guess you'd call it strides i don't know if you in their mind in things like looking at scientific stuff like ground reaction forces and uh you know track man data of club shots and all that. So there's definitely been a move towards a more, I guess, um, diagnostic approach than just somebody going out there and using video and giving a good old golf analysis. So there's a lot of information out there and it's, you know, the job of the golfer to sort through it. And Brian and I are always chiming in to, to help that out. But we have, uh, we have a genius on board and he's done some great work. So I'm going to get my computer ready to share some of those things with you. Uh, and I'm going to have Brian quickly go over the, what, what we mean when we say alpha force or beta force and what that might mean versus things like, um, like for example, there's some club kinetics out there that talk about uh, sway of the club and lift of the club, like relative to a room and all that. And um, uh, so let's have Brian get that all started off for us. I think it'd be easier if I, um, Go in the big room here. Go ahead and shoot this over. Okay. So let me um, so I can see what I'm doing here. It's quite the uh, when you do a two person show. It's quite the uh, it's quite the deal. Okay, so 
you can build one of these yourself. I mean, obviously, this is all made as it is all get out right here. Um, the Jacobs air, airplane, Jacobs 3D airplane. So basically, you've got everybody's heard of Alpha. The, the axis of Alpha runs just like the score lines on the club. So if you turn the score lines, you turn, you turn, you turn the axis of Alpha. Beta runs perpendicular to the score lines, and Gamma runs along the shaft. It's, that's easy. So when you're talking about whether it's a, a force or a torque, so basically force is pushing or pulling something and torque is, is twisting it. So let's I just think, say- I think one of the big things about the forcing is that you have to move the, la- the mass center, right? You, so when it's being forced, the mass center has to linearly move. It's gonna respond, but it has to, has to have some linear movement. So if you wanted to just do the forces, you, you, you force in the direction of the, the little axis right here. So alpha force up and down, beta force side to side, and gamma force is toward and away uh, down the long axis of the shaft. But the important part about that is, is no matter where the club is. So I've got this little trick here for, for folks to, to understand the, the negatives and the positives uh, see, I haven't run this by Michael yet, so this is. <laughs> let's see. So, if you if you got down perfect here, time to do it. You got here, you got here at address, and you just said, "Okay, I'm going to get the club away from where it is, you know, away from me." So, I'm going to force it from underneath the club away from me. That's positive alpha force. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the club away from me, side to side. That's Positive beta force. I'm gonna move the club away from me along the long acid shaft. Positive gamma force. So that's how you remember your positives. Now, when the club gets up, up, up here, now you know you have to kind of. That's why the airplane helps. So, really simply, because we're going to be talking about this. So positive alpha force, and then this would be negative alpha force. So you see up here at the top of the swing, positive alpha force would be this action, and negative alpha force would be that action. And then we talk all the time about beta force, force across the shaft, that's negative beta force, that's positive beta force. Now, and gamma is, you're curving the club, so this is negative gamma force. Now, the, the torques and the rotations on, on the club, uh, the, the fixed axis on the club is around the axes. So alpha torque, that would be negative alpha torque, positive alpha torque, beta torque, positive beta torque, negative beta torque, and then negative gamma torque, positive gamma torque. So what's important to, to understand about all of this is that not only do you have those forces and those torques, but then there's going to be responses. Because when I, when I move this club, if I just said, okay, if, if Mike said, Brian, give me one of those, um, you know, positive beta force, you know, lagging club head takeaway from the golfing machine days, that that club is, I'm going to get some translation about this mass center right here in the nose of the plane, but I'm also getting angular response or blowback in, in the other direction. So this, I know this is, you know, for people that never saw this before, this might be, you know, kind of a quick rundown, but we, we got limited time and this is going to be, recorded and you can go back and watch the beginning anytime you want. So go ahead, Mike. I think you got the positive and beta, uh, positive and negative beta torque reverse there. But just to let oh, you know. I was doing okay. it as rotation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was doing it, was doing right. it as rotation. So, Sorry. All right. So um, now when we're deciphering these things, and this is super important to understand, and that is the fact that how is this defined? How do we come about uh, with this with this information? So what happens is we have a motion capture, and we're looking at the movement of the club in the room. So we're looking at the movement of the club in what's called an inertial frame, the room. Dr. Steve sets that up. Now, the club moves around. So 
in the room, relative to the room, I'm going to just go straight up against my webcam here. So if I move the club towards and away from the webcam, side to side from the webcam, and up and down, those are the directions that the club is moving. Okay. And most people, when they describe how the club is being forced and torqued, it, it, it doing it relative to that. Now, the issue with that is if I'm going to push the club towards the webcam, like I see Brian's head right there, and I'm going to push it towards Brian's head. So when I'm at my setup position, when I go to push it towards Brian's head, it's that motion he was doing before where he was pushing the airplane up like this. But when I'm at the top of the swing and I go to push it towards the webcam or push it towards Brian's head, I'm now doing it with a completely different action. So when it's up here, now I'm putting what we call force across the shaft to push it towards the webcam. Here, it was more of that, what he called alpha force there, that lifts the club up this way. So you have two completely different actions of the golf, golfer with different rotation effects, yet relative to the room, it's the same direction of force. So that's why it's really important that you take the information from the room, how much it's going up, down, away from the camera towards, and you put it into that localized alpha, beta, gamma situation so you could see exactly what the golfers experience, what they're feeling, and it's more of a realistic approach. And uh, from what it looks like, Dr. Steve is the only person who's ever done that and done it to the point where a golfer says, that's exactly what it feels like and, and what it is. So we're fortunate for that. So let me, let me give you a quick example. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen for a second, Brian. Okay. Just give me one sec. I have more things up on my screen than I would like to. Um, okay. So... Tell me what you see. You see Jacob's 3D avatar and Alpha Man, like uh, just below last parallel. Okay, so here's our full body model. And um, this is one of the graphics. So what we have here is, and what I want you to notice is, we have the three directions of the room, like I was talking about. So if you look on the side, can you see my cursor moving? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. So here's X, right? So here's a quick little thing. So X is away from the golfer towards the golfer in the room. So like I was describing towards and away from the webcam. Y is side to side. So it would be like backwards, forwards, and then Z is up and down. So at this point in the swing, if I rotate this around and we want to get a good look at the different directions this club is moving. So, Brian, here's a little question for you. Of the forces, which one is the largest force? Gamma. Gamma, right? So the gamma force, mostly from that big change of direction down at the bottom, is the largest force. So right around this part of the swing, it's starting to really ramp up in the gamma direction. Now, if you look at this closely, if you were to take gamma force, which at this point is really ramped up, and you were to continue it on this line, you would see that it's very much in that Y direction. So at that point, that localized force of that gamma is lining up with towards and away from the target line pretty much. So you're gonna have your biggest towards the target line force that you're going to have in the swing right there. Now, shortly after that, the club is going to start to come around this way. And then the gamma force will move away from side to side. It'll move more towards the X direction. And if you were looking at it from the Y only, you would see a big force drop off because the gamma went in a different direction. But if you're only looking at the Y and the Z and 
the X, if you're doing a 3D, you would see a big drop off in the Y and not realize that it's the gamma direction going into more of the X and the Z. So that's why it's so important to make it a localized situation. So if you go to this view now, I'm going to zoom in here. Um, the club head res uh, representation is just a, just a globe on the center mass. So if I'm right there and we're looking down at this golfer from up top here, beta force, force across the shaft, is purely in the X, this way. So at this point in the swing, now, why did I choose this point in the swing? It's when, get, it's when the gamma, the big force is directly down the target line. And this is the point in the swing where the alpha rotation of the club, the, the moving out rotation this way, starts to slow down. Okay, so how the golfer's forcing across the shaft is making the club slow down in its rotation a bit. So this is a big point in the swing. This is when shaft deflection, this is like generally 0 0.04 before impact. Now, if he was going to, if we were going to look at force across the shaft here, it's purely in this direction. And that has to bank around towards to get to the ball. Now, beta force, force across the shaft will peak shortly after that, and then the golfer will start to let up on it as the club moves around. But the point of the matter is, we've been listening to people argue, especially with us, about forces and torques and what have you, and talking about it relative to the room and then saying a local coordinate system is just like face to path on a, on a track man or something like that. And that's not true. So if you look at um, this graphic here, if I could find it. Can you see this now? Yes. This graphic? Yeah, you can make it bigger. All right, so this is purely the forces in the X, Y, and Z. So this is how they're moving around in the big frame. This is not alpha, beta, gamma. And blue is this one in the Y. So you you'll blow, see you, that you, as you, it's coming down. Can you blow that up a little bit, Mike? I, uh, I haven't zoomed I mean, just, in. Just, I don't... just no, just the uh, just the window. Just make the window bigger. Oh, okay. Okay, there you go. So I just picked an arbitrary point, which is like right here in the downswing, where um, uh, the golfer is starting to. Um, make his move towards the ball. And you'll notice that in the Y, there is big changes, especially in that final point. So you can see how the Y comes down and then right around this point, it actually dropped off the graph. That's when gamma force was pointing right along the Y. And then shortly after that, when the gamma force starts to bank around, look at the change in the Y direction. So there's a big change around in the Y direction because the gamma force went somewhere else. So it's that change of direction. If you're looking purely in the Y, you think the club is gonna snap forward. Uh, so that's uh, why alpha, beta, gamma in that local setting is, is the most important piece. So we're always looking at it relative to the room and we're always looking at it uh, relative to alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, when you look at the, well, if we put the coordinates on the hub, I know this is a high level discussion, uh, that motion of gamma aligns more with how that, um, those components on the hub are. So that's why you'll see the different quivers on the, on the hub. So Brian, you wanna make sense of this for everyone? Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to move this thing called the white stretch down a little bit here and then merge this over. Okay, so, uh, just want to see what you're seeing on Zoom. Okay, so we're going to spotlight this video. Okay, so this is me a little while ago with the airplane. And this is the point in the swing just below last parallel where Mike was talking about where the, you know, 
the room is the room, but look where the look where the, the beta axis of this club is. This is exactly the beta axis, and this red right here is exactly the alpha axis. So what Mike's saying, you know, is if you're pulling just along the shaft, you're pulling the grip off the club, right? If I took a, we'll go a yellow here, and I put a big circle right here. So that on the screen, on my TrackMan hit screen right there, that's at least left to right as you look at it, where the gamma force is going. Now, we go a couple frames past this, like right here, still, still not to the ball yet by any stretch. And now this, <laughs> this gamma force is going from here to over here. So as you look at it from this front view, as, as this changes direction, it looks like the club, if you were just measuring along this screen here, left to right on the, on the right side here, it looks like the, like I'm pulling less, but I'm just pulling instead of toward this yellow circle, I'm pulling toward this yellow circle. And then as I get a little further up right here, still pre-impact, which is, you know, important because we're always talking about now it's only yeah, so that's about the point where that's about the point where you're going to max out maybe just a little before that of force on the blue direction right about there right about there so if i if i got rid of all of this right now and i just took the blue and drew an arrow that's what <laughs> just look at that now that is nowhere near pointing Nowhere near. And you can see that, that club is not that far from the ball right there. Nowhere near pointing to the screen. So so, so a, note to, a note to Popeye Golf Mechanics. When you talk about forcing towards and away from the target at this point, we're talking about forcing it across the shaft. So I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Now... Uh, can you zoom that in again, bro? Yep. O o on my screen? Uh, okay. So yeah, can you go to your swing and put it to last parallel? Remove the spotlight here. Your, uh, your JC video. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I just had to, I had to take. Uh, okay. So where am I going now? Last parallel. Right, right there. That's okay. Parallel. So if you look at it from another perspective, if you look at the airplane's nose, does the club have to rotate and nose down from there at, at some point? from there to impact does there need to be beta rotation to hit the ball answer simple yes correct it has to be or you whiff it so it's basketball has to be or you wouldn't hit so those actions that we just saw where brian was his gamma force went from pointing towards the screen to now going around as we said and then that force in the blue direction ramping up and then easing up this club also has to rotate in that beta direction, as it's banking around, the club also has to rotate and nose down. And that's the point where it's taking place. So if you look here for a second, and I went over this at the top 100. Hold, hold, hold retreat, on, let me, right? let me, So if I opened up my right hand. Hold on now, let me, let me uh, I have to. Um... That's all right, I think that, can't you see it in the little window? No, not, not on the main thing here, so let's see. Oh. Uh, I got to. Figure out why my spotlight won't disappear here. That's okay. Okay, add spotlight. There you go. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, so if you're looking at the beta rotation, which would be this, right? So the beta plane, if I put my hand against the side of the club and I went like that, that's beta rotation, the beta plane of motion. So during the course of the backswing, it's going to rotate and then on the way down, it's pretty much going to stay similar 
And then right about that point in the swing for Brian there, it's going to start to go and we're going to lose that beta angle. So it's going to start to beta rotate. And that's taking place as we start to push across the club. The club starts beta rotating as we come into that impact like that. So when you see that club moving in people's hands, it's the different directions that are taking place when that club is, is coming around. So that's uh, what is happening at the bottom of the swing. And then when you're looking at, um, if you go, you can take me off spotlight and go back to your video. And go to last parallel. Right. And if you look, and you look at the force direction now, the force direction of across the shaft, so you can see what needs to take place to move it across the shaft this way right, is going to make the club want to rotate back a bit as you drive it forward. So that's why things like the golfing machine and Homer Kelly and every player who's played the game feel that lag pressure at around that particular point in the swing. That's why Ben Hogan and Tommy Armour and all the great players back in the day say they wish they had three right hands because they felt that phenomenon that we're describing here. Now, shortly after this, it drops. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, we're going to look at the torque in the hands for a second, but shortly after this point, it drops off. So uh, growing up, Brian and I, we worked with Ben Doyle. And what, what, what was one of the secrets of golf? Wasn't there three? What was the secret of golf? Uh, the, lag? Yeah, well. Club, uh, head la club head lag pressure, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Straight you, plane you, line. You, <laughs> yeah, <head> well, <laughs> yeah, so that, that lag pressure, trying to sustain it, is not something you, is going to be achievable from what we've seen. So we've never seen a golfer continue to force across the shaft at an increasing rate. Golfers are able to really keep up with the club by being able to use their reserve of force as they're bringing it around. But we've never seen anyone who's yet who's been able to increase that going to the hit, um, even when I try to do it as much as I can. So uh, that lag idea, that lag pressure idea has merit and is obviously a phenomenon that's taking place. And then it starts to ease up as it as it comes into the strike um now if brian was able to bring that club around and then get the center of mass to pass his hands before the hit so can you demonstrate that brian uh, let's go back to just uh the video spotlight so can you see me or you yeah or perfectly you're, you're there all right, so now if there's a scenario where I'm coming down and I'm coming into the strike and let's say I'm a golfer and uh, I'm hitting a driver way up on it or I'm not the greatest of iron player, let's say, and then the club head comes in and passes our hands like this. So now the mass center is, has passed the hands. Now you're going to be positive beta forcing and that's when you'll have some negative alpha torque. So if you're somebody who really hits up on it, with a driver, um, that's uh, the situation there when it comes to that. So it hits, that's hits up on it, and hits up on it, and leans the shaft back. Combination of those two things. It, it, the best way to look at it in this regard is where the center of mass is in relation to the hands. Will give you a good idea of um, you know what direction, how you're moving. I mean, there's a big <laughs> one of the biggest strongest parts of you or the most massive parts for you is up and around here and that that move that's made is able to put down through the arms put force across the shaft so when i when we hear that there's no such thing as force across the shaft it's pretty hard to believe because um, well, we all what, feel it as well what's what's super um i'll tell you using using zoom and, and, and be be mixed at one time 
So what's super interesting is there's a lot of folks out there teaching this open hand drill, right? Where you basically, you're taking your grip and then you're unhooking it and your hand is just, all you have is force across the shaft of the club and run out of your hands. And yet, if I do this, I'm able to make a swing and trust me, I go in the studio for you and hit a 120 yard seven iron shot doing it. So the only force that I can apply with my right hand is force across the shaft. So that, that, that'll, that'll, you know, if, if somebody's telling you, I, I saw an analysis out there a few months ago where he asked really nicely, go ahead and try to do what we do, alpha, beta, gamma forces, alpha, beta, gamma torques, and beta force, negative beta force, which is that force across the shaft we're talking about, was zero, basically, the whole downswing. There's something just, as it was once said about the golf machine, tragically flawed with that analysis, because there's no way. Right, let's it. switch gears. We'll come, let, let, let's switch gears. We'll come back to this, and let's get to the paper. We'll just bounce around a little bit. Awesome. All right. So um, one of the things that, Dr. Steve has talked about for years, uh, something that we've been working on is the golfer club system and the inertia of the golfer club system. The best way to, to think of it is um, a figure skater. You know, when a figure skater brings their arm close, they spin, they bring their arms out, they, they slow down rotationally. So what, we're, what he always wanted to do, and we did it in our full body model, uh, is we what we've done is we've taken the center of mass. I'll give you the synopsis, and then the paper is not going to it's not going to take that long to get out uh, to come out. So you got you got to mute somebody there, Brian. Yeah, got it. Okay, so picture the center of mass of the person. So uh, your body has a center of mass, of, like a balance point. Um, it can move as you start to position and move your body and twist it around the center of mass moves and we map out how it moves. Uh, when it comes to the golf club, the, where the mass center is, is, is fixed, right? It's on the, on the club and the club is, you know, um, rigid. So the body, it can move. So the, the person has the ability to change their body to affect where their center of mass is. The most famous example is the guy who jumped backwards over the high jump, right? So to give you a quick Fosbury. idea of that, the Fosbury flop, right? Yeah, so I'll just use the, this airplane here, right? So there's the center of mass of the airplane. And right. So picture the person jumping over. Here's the, Here's the Olympic bar and the person's coming in and they're jumping over and everybody was jumping like this when they went over the bar. So they were, they were taking the center of mass of their body and going over the bar when they jumped. Now, when you jump backwards and you reconfigure configure yourself and you make yourself bent like this, what happens is the center of mass of your body, picture yourself becoming almost like a donut, right? And the center of mass of your body is actually somewhere underneath you, right? Where your legs are bent this way. And what the fall, what was his name? The flop. Fosbury. Fosbury what, flop. They were, yeah. That was before my time. So by doing that, the center of mass of the person didn't have to clear the bar. So when you see those people jumping and they're contorting themselves and it looks like they're just getting over the bar, it's they've configured themselves so their center of mass doesn't have to clear the bar and that's how they can jump higher. So there's that phenomenon of, you know, that type of jumping thing. And then there's also the, ro just like in a club, there's also the rotational phenomenon of um, our moment of inertia. Like how do we move our arms and twist our body so that our bodies can have less resistance when we're trying to turn and all that. So that's something that Dr. Steve has always talked about and he always wanted to do it and we did it. So 
I'll share the screen with you and I'll give you a quick rundown and then uh, we'll let the paper talk about the rest. All right, so you should see a golfer at the top of their swing and it looks like they're in a Humpty Dumpty egg. Is that what you see? Yep. Okay. So top of the swing, just picking an arbitrary point just to show you because it's interesting. Um, you could ignore the globes and the numbers. They have specific meanings for the paper. But what I want you to take a look at is this golfer up at the top of their swing, their center of mass of their overall body is right there. So it's a little bit out away from them, below the belly button area, where you would expect it. Does move up and down a little bit during a swing. But there's the center of mass of the player. Now, what we've done is we have put alpha, beta, gamma on that, right? So you can see there's the alpha axis, there's the beta axis, and there's the gamma axis. So as the golfer moves around and um, all their body parts change shape and change form, this, the distances make a big difference. So for example, the lower arm here and the upper arm have a certain amount of mass. So the more they lift up this way, the more they're going to change your ability to rotate in all three alpha, beta, gamma directions with different moments of inertia. So distance is a big deal. So the easiest way to understand this, and if you come for lessons this year, we're going to look at this in your swing. But the easiest way to understand this is if I took this golfer and I went right along the alpha axis right there. So right now we're looking directly at golfer alpha of the whole entire body. So if I alpha rotated him, right, he would go around like this. So the width of this egg is showing us how difficult it would be. So picture like you grabbed a punching bag right there and you were going to twist them around alpha wise. It's telling us uh, how difficult that is to do. And then here's the beta axis. So now if I get on the beta axis, Right. So now if I was going to take him and twist him, you could see the globe right now, the, the egg is much wider and bigger. So he has more resistance. It's going to be harder for him to rotate that way than what we just saw. And then like always with the gamma, when we look down at body gamma, uh, that's always going to be one of the smaller ones for it being able to twist. So what we found so far, and Dr. Steve had a hunch on this for many, many years, is that there is a difference in skill level. There's a difference in how much the club factors in. And there are definite trends in how the golfer manipulates their body to swing more efficiently, whether it be for power or longevity. So it definitely matters. There's definitely a pattern of great players and then the question uh, it comes, is it something you can consciously change someone to do and manipulate them so that they can make a more, uh, they can make ease of, the ease of twisting their body faster or more consistently possible? So is it possible to change it and how do you change it? And that's my job in the paper. So that's what I, that's my job in there. So uh, that's a little quick preview, but it's pretty cool. Now, back to the center of mass of the body for a second, real quick here. When you start to map out the movement of the center of mass of the body, there's a definite difference in skill level. Uh, for sure, the better player, I'll, I'll get, let me give you a quick, uh, I've been looking at this for so long that I'm used to looking at it. Let me give you a quick, uh, look at it. Okay, so what you're looking at is obviously this portion of the downswing to impact. Uh, this is the center of mass of the club and you can see that it's purple here and then it's blue. So that means it's been, it's rotating, right? Each side has a color. So that means it's going through its rotation. Um, that's not really what's for the analysis on this part. The analysis on this part is, and I'll play it 
in a little bit so you can see it, is to see the trace of the center mass of the club. Um, and there is definite up and down motion, and there is definitely a signature pattern to the transition of the better player. So before we see one live, I just want to show you. Uh, I know, Brian, you always talk about that there's still a merit to talking about some type of traditional global swing plane. So there you go. It's there. <laughs> I always I always find it interesting how the hands disappear right there, right? Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to let you talk for a little bit while I get a live animation going of that. Okay, so one of the things that, that um, I want to show people here, what I'm going to do is uh, this, and we'll go to this virtual Zoom JC video, so I'm a little bit bigger here. Okay, so you, you see a lot of people talking about this laydown move here at the top. And what I'm going to do is zoom hey, in. They're starting, I'm, to, they're starting to back away from it. Well, there's still people doing it, right? So I just want you to see. There's a pretty – I didn't make my regular swing here. I tried to make more of a traditional, you know, club more toward laid off at the top. So look at my alpha axis. Look at my beta axis. So what you're hearing – is, and I'll make this, uh, I don't know what color, I'm gonna make it yellow here because that's not one of our normal colors. So force this way, which is what people are saying, do this and this will make the club lay down. In my particular swing is pretty close to alpha force. It's a definite combination there. Yeah, so what you're gonna get if you alpha force the club right there is you're going to get something that looks like lay down because the club is going to obviously draw a diagonal line here. The club is going to try to rotate that way. But if you, I'll pick the airplane up for you and show you, you can kind of see all you're doing is belly flopping the plane behind you and losing, you're losing some of your angles. So you, you hear people talking about, uh, on the deviating from the top. Well, that's because this, that's what's going to, this, this crazy force. I, I don't want to say it's across the shaft, but across the screen right here. Well, I want to, I want to uh, just while you say that, it, just to, I mean, when you look at ulna and everybody's into wrists and talking wrists, when you look at ulna and radial deviation, that's a much bigger range of motion than beta rotation of the club. They're not, they're, they're completely like, for example, you'll have a play like Brian's beta rotation is very small there, very small amount. Let's say 10 or 15 degrees of beta rotation. Yet his wrist went from fully ulna deviated to a little bit radially deviated. That's a big range of motion. Yet the beta rotation of the actual club is completely different. Just want to point that out. And, and, and you know, I know folks here is talking about belly flopping a plane. I don't think you're going to get a better example than that right there. I'm belly flopping my name here. You see this thing coming down on Manzella. Schwabink, that's belly flopping the plane. Mike, why, why do we think this is a, is a good thought from the top of the swing? From the top of the swing, you got the airplane here, and obviously I'm coming right okay. to the poof. Right so there. I'm still going to change your grip a little when you come up. Yeah, sure. But uh, um, the reason it's it's the reason why it's beneficial. You you obviously hit the ball much better, right? You obviously it looks like to me you're hitting a little draw these days. Yeah, just a little bit unless I try to cut it. Well, your path has been into out, isn't it? Yeah, about three degrees. I think on this shot, I'm looking at the path was one on this shot. One degree. One degree okay. inside out with a zero face. What's your angle of attack these days? Very, very small. So, mm -hmm. so on there. this shot, so, the so low the point reason... low point in inches was 1.6 inches ahead of the ball, which is pretty close to sweeping it right off the deck. Right there. Oh, boy. For all those divots you took. 
back in the day. All right, so uh, that was a great question, Brian, just asked about, um, you know, why has he had success and why are people finding a lot of success to, to do that changeover in alpha force to belly flop the plane, so to speak, uh, before, you know, earlier. And the reason is, is because it, uh, then you look at somebody like Brooks Kepka who doesn't do that, right? But there's options. But essentially what he's describing there is he is changing the alpha force over and smoothly allowing the plane to belly flop before he makes his move towards the ball line with the force across the shaft that you see there and the move around at a gamma force. Someone like Brooks Kepko or maybe someone like Brian's past, he'd be up at the top of the swing. And then when he started down, there would be beta force, right? There would be that beta force action. And then he'd be trying to get the alpha force out while both actions are taking place. And you used to have a pretty high handle, didn't you, Brian? Yep. And at some point it was so bad that I had to aim about 60 yards left with a driver to be able to break 80. Yeah. So you could see that the difference between, all right, so he used to beta force and get the alpha force out at the same time. Uh, now I hate to say it. I know it was the worst thing you ever tried to teach back in the day, but do you remember the, what was it? The sequence release? Yeah. So, um, and then roll, not too bad. Well, I don't think it's, un it's not uncocking. See, that's the, that's why it was a useless thing, right? To, what was it? To crank it up or something and uncock yeah, it. Crank, no, crank so it would be the, more crank to gyroscope. crank up the gyroscope. Yeah, no, you know, that's not what's well, the, happening. The, the, the problem so it would be, be the, I, I still, I still have some roll there. I, I mean, obviously the, the, the axis is not just going straight. It's very straight down, but it's not. You would be. You well, would it's going to be the, from. It's going to be. It's going to come from. It's going to come from when you change where your center of mass of your body is. Sure. So, all right. When you come up next time. So, um, back to the sequence release of in in, in your mind. Even though um, it's a good way to think about it is to is to do your alpha for change over your alpha force before you make your big move towards the ball. So that's why. Um, it's been successful. All right, let's look at a mass center moving. Can you see my screen? See your screen. Nobody, nobody's there yet. Yeah. Nobody's there yet. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a, it's an empty little fat lab screen. Don't you worry. We got something coming. I'll play it a few times. So you get an idea. Looks a lot like Dustin Johnson, doesn't it? Looks a lot like Dustin Johnson. And 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 for the we uh, heard we had a Dustin critic. Johnson. I don't know if you saw this, but we had a <laughs> critic out there that said it looked like a We stick had a critic get out of here. It looked like a get stick man. Here, we should hire somebody on Fiverr. To uh, to redo it, we're trying to show the center of mass. Yeah, but so we took out Alpha Man. That's 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 what you're, you're trying to look at that little yeah. trace. Of all the critics, though, the best ever is the guy who sent a, a letter to my mom and dad. They did right, a bad so job. See. A bad <laughs> job of raising you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll give you a quick tutorial on this. So there's the mass center of what's happening, body and club, as it comes around. You can see here it's moving a little bit forward already as the club moves forward. There's that big move forward, down, and then DJ, as you know, goes into that left hip, and you can see how it moves back there. Okay. So what's interesting about this is now I'm going to take them from top to impact. Just takes me a little bit second to do each one. So, so we're gonna go from uh, actually we'll start go from address to impact. So 
following that center of mass, the overall body. You can see he makes quite the move forward and down. Boom, and there's point impact. All right, and then we can look at these different traces. And the traces mean something. I'll explain to you in a sec. So we get an idea of the movement of that mass center throughout the swing. And I mean, on this, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, we're talking about millimeters in movement, but it's still, um, I mean, that's meters. And you can see that the up and down motion and side to side is um, can you not zoom crazily in on that, big, that, but that it, sort it, of straight, it, that face on right there. Can you kind of zoom in on the face on so everybody can see the traces? I mean, they see it's Dustin sure. Johnson and impact. I'm going to explain the difference in the traces in a second. All right, so yeah. there's the actual center of mass movement right there, uh, the blue. Yeah, so that was a dress. A is a dress, right? A is a dress. They, they definitely Top of the back swing. They probably now you can't can see. see the letters. Yeah, but it went back. It went you up. You can't see the letters? It would be, yeah. You can't now, see the letters? Now you, now you can start seeing the letters, yeah. Yeah. I made, I, told doc, I made sure Dr. Steve made it so that we could reproduce these in a book. So there's a dress. There's the backswing trace, right? That was top of the backswing. So how many inches is the um, away center of mass movement there? So this is when the, it was highest point of the handle impact end. So inches like in this little A part here? Yeah. From here to here? Yeah, just the, the well, furthest it meters. gets the furthest it gets away. Um, the furthest it gets away in the, at any point in the backswing. Now let me move it. This is why I've just went and bought six pairs of glasses at Costco. Hold on. The lady in Costco said, do you want a transition lens? Do you want this lens? Do you want, I said, give me one of everything and then we'll see how it works. Right, let's see here. Right, let's see. That's a good spot. Oh, I guess that's the furthest back. Okay. What's right, the, so what, in the what's Y. The... Okay. In the Y. So Y is 0. 0.32. 0. 0.32 what? Meters? meters. So if I look, let me look that up for you real quick. 0.32 meters. It's almost a foot, huh? Two inches. Just about a foot. 0.32. Yeah. Well, 0.32. Yeah, 12 inches. So just think about the people out there that advocate no center of mass. So, I mean, you got to remember well, you got to remember, this is Dustin Johnson, big, wide. Stand. Hey, Dustin Johnson is used by people who like no, that like to teach no center of mass movement as a as a model swing. I, I just don't think there's any benefit to it. So, that, quite a bit up, quite a bit up, quite a bit up. So you can you can, your center of mass can move up without your coconut moving up, basically. Because his head doesn't, he doesn't have a big up move like the, like the up move I used to have. Scott Simpson up move. And then it dives down in the run up there. It dives. Yeah. It's yeah. diving. So what's interesting is, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's, if you looked on video, it looked like it's pretty much stained. I mean, they talk about not a lot of movement at all, you know. Yeah, but twelve it inches. Is moving. Is, twelve inches is twelve inches, man. That's a foot. No, come on. What's that? This much? I got size forty-five echoes on. That's a pretty decent amount. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh, see, the up part is, is the most interesting part because he, you know, so. he raises his arm so high. Yeah. All right, let's watch this again. And now take a look at the two different pieces here. The red and the blue. Red and the blue. Yep. 
Gonna stop it at impact again. Okay. Watch how the the one on the side here, right? Is going up slower. See how it's going up slower than this one? Much slower than goes and it's high. Going doesn't it goes forward a little slower and doesn't come back up as much sooner. That's because the this would this is mathematically removing the club. Not this the is arms, the body just only. The club. Not the arms, just, just the, the club. club. Just the effects of the club. So you could see that extra mass that's in the club makes it go up a little more. And uh, I'll play that again for you so you could see. Full swing. So the one on the right, body only, mathematically moves the club out. So when you're doing your training, might be a good idea to keep the club in the mix when you're training and using a golf club, not some like heavy thing that you're trying to whisk around. Right? So there's the range of motion. Now, I could show you another tour player. Uh, why don't I get that queued up while you talk where it doesn't move anywhere near this amount? So why don't I get that queued up while I turn it over to Brian for a few minutes? Okay. So um, I know a lot of folks um, hear people talk about um, forces and torques. I'm going to show you a little chart I got right here. This is, uh, this is very illuminating, as they say. So this is, this is let's just say, generically, not, out, not positive and negative. You got beta force, alpha force, gamma force. There's going to be alpha response from that beta force, beta response from the alpha force, and some negligible gamma response from the gamma force. Gamma so, does not alpha rotate the club. Gamma doesn't alpha. Now, now you got some Very of the moments. Effect. Some of the moments alpha. So what, what does that mean? So it means that if I take a club and I put force across the shaft, that makes the mass center translate and I get this blowback. If I did it and I did have no torque, the sum of the moments, the sum of the torque, which I didn't do any, and the force would be ne negative alpha sum of the moments. If I did this, which made it blow back, and I resisted the blowback, and I just translated it, I, I negated the blowback with torque the other way. The sum of the moments now is zero, and then if I not only forced it this way and had some translation and blowback, but I, I torqued not only through it, but I torqued through it to get back to zero or closer to zero, but I torqued so much through it that I, I made it go the other way. The sum of the moments would be positive. So back to the chart. You got some of the moments alpha, some of the moments beta, some of the moments gamma, and obviously beta torque, alpha torque, and gamma torque. So uh, I went to a public high school and, and a public college, but that's three and three is six and three on this side is 12. And you basically have two of those because you have negatives and the positives. So that's 24 different things. Alpha torque, alpha torque, the alpha war six years of wasted energy from the other side, never ever defined what their alpha torque was. It ain't, I know what it is. I have another graph for that for another day. But I just want you to know when they're talking about alpha torque, they're basically the best I can come up with is they're talking about some, some of the moments alpha or total some of the moments. They're talking about a much bigger piece of this 24 piece, you know, uh, what, what could you cut in 24 pieces that wouldn't fall apart? I guess one of those cookie cakes, right? A 24 piece cookie cake. And That's why golf's so hard. 
That's why golf. So, so check hard. this out. Okay, hold check on. Check this let me, out. Let me get you up there. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. And spotlight. There's Michael Jacobs. Okay, here comes another player center of mass movement. Tour player, driver. Much smaller guy than Dustin. Doesn't lift his arms as high, obviously, because he's smaller. Look at the difference here. Here it comes. So we'll see how much this one moved. Not as far back. Not nearly so You can see it moves up, up as the club goes. Already going back toward the target. Very, very uh, linear. Then a little down and up and back, but not as much up and back. Very different. Very different. So let's zoom in. It's such a small movement that when I zoom in, I'm losing it. I'm trying not to lose it here. I can reorientate it for you. So it moves back. Can't see a damn thing anymore. That's from zooming in on these things. Point one. Point one, so we got, uh, what is this, meters to inches? Okay. Meters to inches. It moved back three inches on this player, Brian. So instead of 12 in Dustin Johnson, three. Three, yeah. Not even, I mean, that much. So you can see there's a variety. I'll play it for you again so you can see it. I'll take it from the top to impact. And we'll make a nice animation of the bottom of the swing. There we go. Remember the one on the right is if we mathematically remove the club. So it definitely won't go as high up on the backswing because there's no club. Oop, I stopped it at the top. I, I meant to put impact. I stopped it at the top of the swing. So it's very small movement because I could barely get it into the screen here. And so there's the overall 3D movement of it. And pretty much all the stuff that's been published on this is the revelation that the center of mass moves. That's pretty much all that's been published on the subject. All right, let's do the downswing. And then as time goes on, we'll, we'll talk about contributions from all the different parts of the body and all that fun stuff. Got an endless supply. As Dr. Steve says, it's bottomless. Here's downswing, moving down. What's the advantage to uh, moving your center of mass down? Obviously, there's an advantage. Well, then you can go back up. See. Trying to give you a good view of how how plain are <laughs> it might be, even though I don't like a single plane discussion because yeah, you look at this and you say, there's a swing plane of the center of mass, right? But look at the globe color. That's how much it's twisting during it. So you can see uh, all of this is created from a couple of XYZs on a chart. So it's pretty impressive work by Dr. Steve. Definitely grateful. It's all you, Brian. Okay, so I got, I got another fun graph here. This one is my contribution to the last six years of my life. Took a lot longer to be able to do that graph than just learn what the heck 
it all means. So I'm gonna. This looks like the eye chart at Costco. So I'm gonna remove the spotlight on Mike, and there it is. Okay, so as that same little chart that we were talking about before. Again, we're just talking about um, generically positive or, or negative because it, it, the graphs, it gets ridiculous. So for all the people who've been trying to follow along, what the heck everybody's talking about? We have showed you what our beta forces and beta torques and all this over the years. So when you hear the term net force, that's these three forces up here in the left corner all together. We call, we call these three together, the sum of the forces. They call this the other side, the so-called other side, net force, okay? So now you go over here. You got alpha response from beta force, right? You push the club forward. You saw me do the little demonstration. Beta response, if I, if I lift the club up, it wants the nose down, right? The responses. They take the three responses. We, we would call this, we rarely look at it, but we would call the three responses totaled up here, summed up. The sum of the responses, they call this the moment of force. So then... They also like to take the sum of the moments. They'll, they'll lump together responses and torques and call it total torque. And sometimes they'll take all three of these and total them up, the total sum of the moments, and call that alpha torque. That's their, the best. They can't even define their alpha torque. There's the alpha torque for you. The total sum of the moments. And then you hear this thing called the couple. That's these three torques, maybe. So look at what alpha torque is. Not positive alpha torque, just, or negative alpha. Just alpha torque is just one thing right here. And then what you got people doing all these, you know, videos with sticks and line of action and stuff like this. It's a simplified model. That's it. At no point, at no point was it ever the same thing that we are talking about. And uh, I think maybe some of the folks knew that at some point. But be that as it may, my little contribution. It took me five and a half years to be able to do that graph. And I'm not 100% sure of the graph because there's been sort of a moving target. But I, I have lots of folks that, that, uh, that um, you know, send me private messages and they show me videos that people are doing and they're not talking about alpha torque. <laughs> they're talking about, first of all, as Mike showed you originally, a lot of this stuff is not done on the club, but it's done to some sort of a, a different reference frame and it's the room, it's the room to start with. And uh, it's uh, it's much easier to do. It's uh, we could almost do it. I, I think we're going to try it when I go up. We could just do it from a gears capture and, and a piece of paper and a calculator. That's how easy it is. If you've ever seen the code, if you've ever seen the code for um, for um, uh, anything like uh, the Steven Nesbitt club program, even if we just switched all the characters, it would be this man. I don't know how many, line, how many lines of code is the club program. You remember? You don't even want to know how but the body program is unbelievable. So thousands, oh, this was fun. thousands. Absolutely. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is uh, look. So if anybody's got any questions on zoom here, we got, you know, Eddie and James Kyle and, and carry in all those, all those folks. But uh, over here, um, Dan uh, Z Zavanius said, Brian, how to help? Uh, I'll let Michael answer this question because he's the best at this. How do you help a handle dragger? Wasn't Chen a handle dragger? Chen was a handle dragger. And each year we removed, we charted how we changed it. But uh, how do you stop a handle dragger? 
Well, so I mean, first, it real I think, quick, because Richie Three Jack used to say they're never going to be. They change the definition. Ah, Richie Three Jack. Richie Three Jack. <laughs> so what's what's the define handle dragger? Uh, the internet, the golf people on the internet. Uh, so I think what um, when people talk about a handle dragger, it's they've put themselves in a spot where they haven't switched ends on the alpha force uh, and they've, they've driven their hands forward and they still have to take out the landing of the plane and they still have to get the club to move out. And they've gotten themselves in a position they where they still got to square that almost, club face up. So you have to twist the crud out of it. Well, that's why you end up with, you know, changing grips and, you know, changing <laughs> face angle. You're sitting there changing the face angle before you go out to play. But no, so you get yourself in a spot where you get so entangled in the linear drive of the club that by the time you come into impact, you have to do all kinds of stuff with your body to help get that club to move out. So okay, it's, let me, it's, not, let me ask you it's this. not the does, smoothest of move outs. Does a handle dragger, if, if Chen was the same strength when he was a little small guy when he first came to you, but if he was the same strength, would a handle dragger have more gamma force or just different aim of the gamma force? Let's just start with the gamma force. Well, here's, the, here's where the efficiency. So here's where the efficiency drops off. Like, so a lot of the, the folks at Jacobs 3D in Japan, um, they make a lot of their, even their tour players over there, They'll make uh, this long swinging action, and then down at the bottom, that club will be so far back behind them that they need a lot of gamma force just to change the direction of the club. So you might see gamma force go through the roof, and the G load obviously increases, yet it's really not helping the situation of you know, club head speed because it's all directional change at the bottom. So when you start, I mean when you start looking at somebody who's handle drag and you start to look at the effects of what happens now, if you took, if you go back in time to like us as handle draggers in the, in the nineties, right. And early two thousands, we didn't have a track man by our side. Right. So no. <laughs> it was, it was pure. It was all out handle dragging. And then, in, you know, over the past bunch of years, you know, at least, handle dragging people and actions have been kind of reined in by um, track man, but they're still doing a similar action and then trying to get that club to, I guess, have a left swing direction. And then you start to see some, some crazy, some crazy moves. So I, I just think a good way to define a handle dragger is just not a good smooth, combination of linear and angular in a swing so just just so now talking about beta force what was chen's original negative beta force that's force across the shaft when he first came to see you now you're now you're asking me to tax my memory um he was a little kid hooking it um i want to say maybe like we reduced it 30 newtons that's what I remember. It's a bunch, because it, it, it certainly wasn't over 50, was it? To start with. Yeah, I think that's what it was, 50 or 60. 50 down to 20. That's similar, similar to me. It's yeah. so 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 the, the point there is when you talk about some of the moments, so you got somebody who's shoving the handle forward for yeah, but yeah, but shape. yeah, but the sum of the moments, the sum of the moments always look the same. It didn't, it was it, it's just the way that you're creating. I mean, his right. sum of the moments always looked at him. That's why they, that's why everybody says that ah, club kinetics. Everybody, it's a golf swing. It looks like what it is. No, yeah. the airplane took off from JFK and landed in London. Yay! But there's a lot of turbulence along the way. If you're, but but the point the point I wanted to make is if if I had 50 force across the shaft, negative beta force, I had about how much alpha torque? 40. When I had when I had 50. Force across the shaft. I had 40 alpha torque. Well, I mean, it's a different metric. So when you're talking force, you're talking about Newton. So the best way to think about it is, is a bucket of balls. So 
if you have 50 newtons of force, let's say negative beta force this way, 50, yep. it's the same exact as if you took the 50, you, let's just picture there's a bucket of 50 balls. You just got your small, your practice bucket at Rock Hill. Yep. Same that you would push to move 50 balls. Okay. So I was doing that much oh. pushing. How much torquing was I doing so that I had reasonable? Well, on? that, that much pushing that you do, right. Creates some type of response. Right. In, right. And then As that rotational that. response is what you're talking. Yeah. That's, and that's what the torque, it's a different metric. It's a Newton, you know, it's, it's a, it's a rotational torque. Right. But you're still, the, those two things are still adding up to the sum of the moment. So the point I'm trying to make is my sum of the moments didn't change much, but I'm doing less torquing and less forcing and the club head speed went up. So just, that's when you look at somebody yeah. like Ernie Els, yeah. who looks like he's swinging. E Fred Couples looks like he's swinging easier yeah. than somebody. Yeah, who's the sum of the moments is it. They the sum of the moments is like I am. The sum of the moments tells you. The sum of the moments doesn't tell you anything. Well, it, it tells you you probably got to the ball. That's about it. That's the, that's about it. So, uh, so when, when you, um, here's a question I, I, I get a lot. So when, when somebody gets a club capture, right, they come to see you, I'm working on getting my, my gears, cameras. So they go someplace, an ambassador, right? We got a few ambassadors, uh, on, on, uh, on the zoom call right now. And, and the, the, the swing gets run. What? Do you, what can, what, what can a golfer expect to find in a, in a, in a, in a club capture that he wouldn't get from any other, you're not going to get from a gears capture that just runs gear software. You're not going to get from a MM or any of these guys that I'd never heard of until about a year or two ago with their own 3d, you know, what's the, the basic difference if, Every single, go let's just say, that I'll give you an example and then I'll, I'll shut up. So we're at the teaching summit and we've got five guys on the Central Florida golf team and they, they all hit a shot. They get captured. Guy at number one gets captured at AMM. Phil Cheatham reads out all his stuff, talks about it for half an hour. Uh, number two is the... The, the other competing Pohima system guy from Florida, he, he, he talks about his stuff. Then you've got uh, Gears, Neffel, read all of that stuff out for you. We'll get somebody like uh, Granado and Webb to do it. And then somebody else would be, uh, uh, you know, one of these PhDs that have their own software and they have ground reaction forces and stuff like that. What is going to be different, the most difference in when, if just the club program, now I'll add, I'll, add, I'll add the question of the body program. What's going to be the difference to the people out in the audience watching these five guys hit a shot or five gals? I want to be sexist. Five gals hit a shot and then they describe. What, what kind of things are you going to be able to say that you wouldn't be able to say if you didn't have the program about that person's swing? Wouldn't it be nice to do that at a teaching summit, to have this uh... – yeah. To have that. Just an exhibition. Um, I mean, we did an exhibition. Yeah, but, but but it wasn't a comparison, and it was a it was a select music. We got you had a thousand people in the audience. What? Give me give me two things that you're going to be able to say happened in this golf swing that there's no there's a million way, things. A million. There's a million but things. But give me the two things that everybody's going to go. Oh. Alpha, yeah. beta, gamma, the alpha, beta, gamma conversion, um, optimized hub pass. Jeez, uh, it's endless. Um, rotational resistance. Have you ever modifying seen? Modifying the paths. It's just, I mean, there's a book about it. Have you ever seen a golfer live capture that you've done that – if you would have never seen them, you would have thought they had a perfect golf swing, but they didn't. In other words, 
are you ever, does anybody, like, you can have perfect track man numbers and have a horrible swing. You can have a pretty good, I've seen some pretty good uh, kinematic sequences on swings that looked garbage. Have you ever seen a swing that they kind of fooled the club kinetic program a little bit, but it really wasn't that good? No, you can't. It, it, it's it's exactly like Dr. Steve says, It's that's exactly what's happening. He doesn't know how to interpret it. He tried to interpret a couple things in the papers he wrote. It's not for him to interpret or to be talking about it, you know, and interpret. It's just, it's just, it's just what's happening. It's, it's, it's just reporting what's happening and it reports what's happening on every single thing. And now within a body too. And then it's up for us to decide what it is, but it's okay, so when you, never, when never you, not produce what's happening. Okay. So we, we've been together now for 16 years. So when, when you first got the club program and you taught with it for about a year, the biggest change that I saw in your teaching, you know, one off watching you, is that you then learned, you learned quick, that to manipulate the club, it was all about body position. And then you ramped up your body knowledge and you focused on the body and you produced unbelievable results with all your students. Chan being the most notable, you got a couple of guys people have heard of right now that you're working on. People will find out who those people are at some point, not tonight. So now you have the body program and you've had it for a couple of years. I know, you know, this is, you know, finally. Yeah, it's really it's, this, this whole pandemic thing. If there's one good thing that came of it, we really refined this program. Dr. Steve had the time to do it and we spent a lot of time on it. Has there been anything that you've seen in the in the body program that has altered what you've taught? Oh God, yeah. Okay, give us two examples. Uh, I mean, the importance of uh, the arms and the club, and you know up and around this part of the swing, you know, how, where the arm, where the mass of the arms go with the club and where that is in relation to how that affects things is tremendous. Like uh, I know a lot of people for a long time thought that you shouldn't even use your arms in a swing. You should just kind of strap them to your body and kind of, you know, uh, that that's been a big one. Um, so, 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 so wait, let, let me, let me, let me I, I, I don't, I'm not interrupting for any other reason, but to clarify, but so you think there's some advantage to an arm lift? Well, it's a, it's a, yeah, I mean. So try, is, it trying to keep your arm from lifting, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Okay. There's one, there's one thing. Not a good there. idea. Um, what else? So. If you looked at work and power, Dr. Nesbitt's work and power, it had a certain level of complexity with its body work and what it reported on the body. And the best way I could describe it to you is, let's say on a scale of one to 10, he took that to a three. And this has been taken to a 10. So for, let me give you the perfect example, right? Uh, there's in the paper, it talks about how one of the wrists did negative work in the scratch player, right? Right. So that was just joint torque. That did not, he did not in that model, right? If you look in the paper and you look at the equations, that just had work at the joint, angular, didn't have the linear work. Right, didn't have yeah my arms moving like this, but I might not be changing angle really a lot locally. But you know from the other parts, you know the tension, compression, distance traveled by the um, by the wrist linearly. So the work and power is not going to be the same analysis that was in the paper. It's all the work now. So it's like you know he takes the model to different thing so that's that's a big one you know how much work is being done in the body and the efficiency of the body so like for example a lot of people always talked about um 
uh, you know, his first conclusions of how much, what percentage is done of the body and gets to the club. Right. Right. It's going to be much different now when you add, when you add in uh, all the linear stuff in the body too. Tension, compression, shear, that kind of stuff. So. How has, so, um... what, what I'm, so, uh, so, uh, Dr. Steve, we're doing this global inertial paper about what you saw with the egg. And then I'm doing work and power modern version. As a, uh, as a book or a paper? It'll be a new work and power. As a small little book that you, that on Amazon. I'm doing it with Steve. So. He so likes that. He likes seeing things grow. And, and... What do you think about the... Uh, the fascination uh, from some people of, of, you know, the, the papers that Steve wrote when the papers have the same math as the current program and the programs are both so much better. Why, why do people hold on to these papers? You think as a, some sort of, that's a, what I mean, that's all they have to look at. Yeah. That's all they have to look at. You know, I mean, I don't know. I think we've put out a pretty decent amount of stuff. You did, you have a book? You there, Brian? You froze. Anybody else lose Brian there? We lost Brian. Let me call him. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm frozen. You're, I think you. You're frozen. I'm frozen. So <laughs> we're, we're talking, and, and it, it, it's all getting to. Um, if you, if I'm on speaker over there, we can still talk. Can you hear me now? Can you hear yourself? Yeah. All right, go ahead. No, I, I, no so uh, basically what I think most pe people want to know is, right, that they're, they're, they're high-end golf enthusiasts or they are, you know, high-end golf teachers. What's the most important thing they should take from all the work that you know between Steve and yourself and, and, and Alex and, and, and my little contribution, what's the most important thing you think that sh should be learned for the so whatever you teach, you're, you're slick? Um, the best way to put it is I'll put it from Steve's cat. I'll put it what Steve says all the time. This is just what's happening. So anything that he's provided from his end, whether it be the club or the body, it's exactly what's happened. Hey, there's a nice picture of you up there now. It's exactly, yeah. it's exactly, right. it's exactly what happened, right? And he is not going to say what's better or worse or uh, what you should do with it or what's important because he doesn't know. So, um. He just is reporting what's happening for us to decide what to do with it. So, but, but, but it, it, if the story was written down, we never produced one more thing. That was it. What, what's the thing that's going to outlive us? So of the stuff we've come up with so far. Outlive us. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you my answer. I think the, the, the airplane, I think thinking about the golf swing, as when you input force across the shaft, no matter where it is, it creates the same response, and that response mm. is going to be reflected in the overall golf swing. And that's why. It, that's why it's exactly what it feels like. You know? Right. You can't. You can't look back at the history of golf, where players say they feel like they wish they had three right hands, and everybody's described the throw. Um, isn't it like the Jim Hardy group talks about a throw? Right. And everybody, right. everybody, 
everybody feels that I don't know anybody who's ever played the game that half that just as they start their downswing, they said, Oh my God, the club's going to go flying out of my hands. Let me stop it. I don't, I never felt that when I swung a club. I, I always felt like I had to get the club head to the ball. So, uh, you know, what's most interesting, I think that will outlive anything is whether or not people like us or like our stuff or whatever, which is fine. Right. There's a guy, Dr. Steve, who was able to work with, who is able to solve a problem and tell you exactly what's happening. And it's, it's amazing. And all the people who work with us, hey, there he is. Can you hear? Can you talk? Yeah. No, no, I can't talk. Oh, I just hung up on you. Sorry. Hold on. Let me call you again. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> you know, for all the time and energy you spent in that room, there's always a technical problem. Yeah. But like we said, you love, you love, you love it. Uh, I'll try to figure it out. You know, the couple of people who work with us on the technical end and stuff, the guy's, the guy's a genius. He's a pure genius. So, lucky to work and, with uh, Last thing. What is the one thing you would like to figure out What's the next, that, that, that's like the one thing. What's the next thing that you'd like to test to get to the answer? Of? And I'll tell you what mine is. We'll, we'll wrap it up. Oh, for me. The next thing you want to test. Oh, no. For me, the thing to figure out is how the body best moves. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. This is what I want to do. I want to take one of those clubs that's shaped like a shaft. And I want to mark that sucker up and hit a ball and then get a uh, golf like, club. See if you have the little speed stick or whatever. Yeah, that, but the, I don't want to pick on those guys, but like the things that are like that, where there's no L shape at the end, and there, there are new ones coming out every five minutes. I've seen two of them in the last month. I just think that a golf club is shaped like an L for a reason. I have a theory, and as soon as I get up there and few weeks i mean i just always say if somebody's not moving well right why would you want to move not well faster and harder so that's uh that's a that's a good wrap up right so uh well, folks, fun. thanks for thanks, man. thanks for joining us we uh elements we edition really, too really like, coming out really like sharing there you go book book will be out soon and uh hey we'll see y'all down the road with some more info and some more uh, things. Uh,